Hi guys, it's Glenn here. Um, this is the video for, no, the tutorial on how to do the the tracking, like, um, this basically. You know the video I'm talking about. You've you probably watched the video and then realised this is amazing and you want to learn how to do it. That's why you're here. Okay, so first, what you want to do is you need to download the camera tracker and it's called um, Voodoo. Voodoo Camera Tracker. So what you want to do is go into the second download. It's a zip file, and then so basically you download that. It's forty megabytes. It's free, which is great. Uh, and then yeah, I'll put the link in the description for that, so you can download that. And so once you've got that, when you open it, it will look kind of like this. You've got this, this little weird guy in a window, and then you've got this background thing. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's get started. Um, open After Effects or Vegas or whatever, um, and then import your footage. I think this works on Vegas as well, but I'm not really sure. I just do it in After Effects because I like it. Um, okay, so you got a clip here. I wouldn't really recommend having it too long because the the tracking thing just takes ages. And that's basically it. Or well, unless you want to sit all night and just sit and like track things. Yeah, so basically what we want to go into is then render as a PNG sequence and yeah, you render that. And then when you when you're setting where you want to put it, put a folder on your desktop called tracking I'll just name it tracking stuff. Uh cuz they all all the pictures have to go into the same folder, so you need to make a folder for them to go into and then set it so it goes 30 frames per second don't do 60 frames per second uh, and then hit render and I'll I'll speak to you once this is done okay now that that's done rendering um, we can, we're basically finished with After Effects and now we've got this folder here that says tracking stuff and see it's just it's just a picture of like every single frame okay so that's that's crucial for um, Voodoo uh, so we can close that and then open up Voodoo and then when you open a sequence, you click open sequence and then browse where you want to thing and then you go into your well, desktop, uh, I've just saved it onto here so it's on desktop and then click the first picture and then click free move, it's important you click free move, free move instead of rotation or else it won't work uh, yeah so you click ok and then you put your your video in here now so you can see um, yeah, and then it's just all the all the pictures in there. You can click, you can play it through, but there's no need to be honest. Um, and then what you want to do is hit track. Okay, this may take a while. Well, it does take a while actually. It it takes like I don't know, well, seven minutes or something to do this ten second clip. It, uh, and I'm running like an i7 processor and decent graphic card and stuff, so I'll. I'll pause it and then when it's done we can get back to work. Okay now that's finished tracking uh, what we want to do is go to save and then save feature points and then just save it into the same folder you saved and uh, all the PNG things. Okay so click OK and then it might take a little while because it's saving every single point and then next you click file uh, and then save as three no lightwave three D, sorry. And then just I just saved onto the desktop as well, so uh desktop and then just put I don't know tracking points. Points. And I save that. And then click export all and then okay. So now you've got that. You can close that and then open up Symbol four D. Yeah, you need Symbol four D to, to do this by the way. If you didn't know, um, open and then open the track points. Okay, well now that's opened. See so if we see all these track points here. I uh, understand them. So basically, what I want to do is group them all together into one, just to make it easier. So you got all those track points and a single camera. So now we get them all selected. Then all you want to do is press Alt G, so they all go into one folder. Just makes it keeps it like cleaner. Oh, 
So now if you have a look as we scroll through, so you can see it's kind of you can kind of see the basic outline of the map, or yeah, where we're doing that. So what we want to do next is it's it's in this one. Click sky, sky, and then add a texture. Texture, uh, load image, and then select the first picture, and click open, no, and then click the picture, and then animation, and then click calculate, and that just adds all the frames, so it turns into a kind of a video. So then what you want to do is drag that over to the sky, put that there. It looked kind of messed up, but that's fine. And then go to attributes, the attributes tab, and then change that project view from spherical to frontal. Okay, so now it's kind of looking better. So you can see the basic outline of the map. Uh, and then next what we want to do is we want to choose a single point. On, yeah, well I basically just, hang on a second, I'll just render this out so you can see what it looks like. Um, yeah, hang on a second. Uh, yeah, so I just chose kind of a point that was kind of where I wanted to put my uh, text and stuff, and then you select that, and then see it's over here in the attributes bit, and then click, right click on the thing and copy, copy text, and then search the text, just control V to search, get rid of the brackets and the null thing, and then see so you've got this. So basically you're taking this out of the folder, so all you do is drag it, and then put it down there, and that's that done. And then, so now it's out of the folder. And now we can add whatever thing we want to that object or that point, and it'll always just stay there. So you can add a back. No, we want to add a plane. This is just for shadow catching, and you, you child that to the point, and then zero out all the coordinates. And so that's just sitting on the plane point, and and then obviously you can like fiddle around with the angle of it and everything but yeah and then you want to I'll just make it smaller so we can see see what's going on kind of thing um, say 100 okay so we kind of got our line there and then we want to move it just turn it around a bit okay I want to move that back render it out, which I need to set it so it's like that. Okay, that looks okay. No, well, it doesn't really, but whatever. I need to rotate it slightly. Whoopsie daisy. Okay, rotate that. And then we got that, and then we can move it back again a bit further. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, if you want to get back to this like default bit, uh, what you do is just uh, well, what I do is I just click render and then uh, press Control Z after it's rendered the thing. Okay, and now we've got that, so we want to add, uh, make that so it only catches shadows. So you drag the texture on there again, and then click um, set that to frontal as well. And then right click on that, click Cinema 4D tags, then um, compositing, and then composite background. So now that when you render it, it will just disappear. So all it's going to do is catch shadows, which is kind of handy. Um, I'll set that to 100 as well. Okay, I'll just turn this around so we can have another look. What's going on? I need, I need to be back a bit further. As you can see, you just need to tweak this stuff around, but that's basically the idea of what you're doing. I can I can set that to 200 now, 200 by 200. Ah, uh, okay. And then uh, to add text, you just click more text, and then you've got your. It'll probably be like yeah, it's kind of there. And so I'm just gonna write my name, Glenn. My name. My name's Glenn. Uh, the text I use, well, that I use for that thing is. I don't know if I can find it, but. 
think it was it wasn't that definitely. Um Right, I'll just I'll just pick something. Okay, I can't Oh that there it was there. Okay, so I got my name like that. And then what we need to do is chill that to the thing as well. And then zero out the coordinates. And then sorry about that. Okay, so it's kind of stuck in a big. So what you want to do is you can just, I think there's this, and then you just drag that or something. Yeah, you drag that. And if you want that centered on the view, you just click and um, alignment and then middle. Okay, so when you render that out, it's going to look kind of like that. It's a bit big at the moment, but we can sort that. Um, still a bit big, I think. Okay, and then. You can just yeah, you just have to tweak. It's all about the tweaking to make it look nice. Um, sure, I need to. Okay, I th think that looks kind of okay. So go back into the thing and then see it's, it's moving with the thing, which is what we want. And then render that out. It's probably yeah. You just need to play around with it. But um, what what I'm going to do now is yeah, to add the shadow. What you need to do is click light, and then child the light to the thing as well. Set the coordinates to zero. You also have to set it to zero because otherwise it's just gonna spawn in a random place. <laughs> spawn. Okay, and then you kinda just want to create the shadows. So just move it well, just move it kinda where you want, basically. So I've, I've I like it kinda there. Let's just move it around. See what that looks like. You can't see the shadows at the moment because I'm not set it on. Um, shadows, then soft map. That looks better than. Yeah. Basically, you see how it's kind of liney there? You just need to make the plane bigger. So set that to like 500 by 500. And then render that out. Yeah. Right, obviously, you need, to, you need to play around with it a lot, but that's kind of the basics of what you do because no matter where you track it, it's always just going to sit. Like just on top of the text, and then if uh, and another thing, if you want to rotate individual letters on the text, you just click C, and then click the rotation bar, and then you can rotate. Uh, you just click on each like thing like that, and see so you can rotate it. So just to make it look cooler and stuff like that, and then. Yeah, so when you're under that out, it's gonna look kind of a bit funkier. Uh, and then, yeah, it's all about tweaking. You just need to work on it and try and get the ground plane to stick to there, and then just set the shadows. And if you want the shadows to be less intense, you can just then say change that down to say eighty, and then it's less intense. So it's kind of a mellower shadow. But that's basically. Oh, and and if you want to add a, you probably already know this if you're using thing. If you're using Cinema 4D, sorry. Let's say you want a red, a red mat, and then set the reflection up. To, I don't know, say eight percent, and then just drag that onto the text. So when you render it out, it looks kind of like coolish. But yeah, and then so if you want to render it out, then you go to uh, Save Output, and then yeah, General should be on full render, and then click AVI Movie, and then or you know, save it to there, and then anti-aliasing settings, best. Okay, yeah, uh, where was I? Yeah, basically what you want to do is just set the minimum and maximum level to uh, 1 and 16, or you can set it to 4 if your computer isn't that good, and then effects, go to ambient con oh, occlusion, I can't really read that, but whatever. Um, yeah. And then just so once you've got the render settings, then just hit the middle button, and then you'll see it just starts to render out. And it'll just render every frame that you set it to do. I I only set it to do one frame. I'll show you to set it to do all frames. Kind of a fanny. Um, uh, what you do is you click option output and then set um, all frames. 
bar one because the last frame is just um, black because that's what After Effects does. So you set it to zero um, and then to your final frame. If you're on After Effects and you set it one back from the final frame, and then you just click render. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Sorry, sorry. You need to set where you render it to. So I'll set it to desktop um, uh, tutorial tracking. Okay, and then yeah, make sure it's an AVI movie. That's important because or else it'll just render out a bunch of pictures which you don't really want. Okay, so you just click render, and then it's just it'll just render out every picture one after another. So you can you can view them back here. Well, we only got we only got two pictures in there, so it's kind of pointless. Uh, well, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, this tutorial even, and um, yeah, I'll. I'll do some more of other things that I think cool and if you guys want to see so I uh, hope you enjoyed watching and uh, yeah see you there